Building robots can be pretty tough, which may convince you to go online and just buy a kit yourself, but buying robots is also really tough because you're looking at so many expensive options and you don't know how good or bad those options are until you actually buy the robot. If you are a beginning roboticist and you want to start off with an assembly kit, I have one piece of advice for you. Do not buy legged robots. Unless you want to drop $74,000 on this guy. The only reason I can think of to buy legged robots is if you were working on some very niche research field or project such as central pattern generation. And if you are one of those people, then this video is for you. I'll be reviewing three hexapods that I've used. The Phoenix hexapod, the Adit hexapod, and the Freedove hexapod. And I'll talk about all of their pros and cons so you can figure out which one to buy. So the Phoenix hexapod, which is the largest one, is made of aluminum whereas the other two are made of acrylic, which makes these lighter. Of course, the aluminum Phoenix Hexapod, this, uh, the, the Phoenix Hexapod's aluminum body does make it more durable, but that makes it also heavier, which means it's hard to control and it's very easy for it to lose balance. Next, let's take a look at the bottoms of their feet. For the Phoenix Hexapod, you've got these rubber tips at the end which help it get a better grip. The Adit Texapod does not have a rubber tip at the end but I still find that this one is easy to work with. The, ru the rounded tip gives it a lot more balance. Lastly we have the Freenov Hexapod which has pointy feet and frankly I think this makes this robot very hard to balance, very hard to control because these feet are always slip slipping. They do not have a lot of grip on hard surfaces and even on carpet it still makes this hexapod very wobbly. So I find this one is actually one of the most frustrating to work with, uh, the pointy feet. Another difference between these robots is the degrees of freedom per leg. Degrees of freedom is the number of servos that each one has. So this Phoenix hexapod has three degrees of freedom because it has three servos. One, two, three. One of them bends like this, another one bends like this, and another one bends like this. The Freenov Hexapod, exact same, three thi <laughs> exact same thing, three degrees of freedom, one here, here, and here. The Deep Hexapod is the only one with two degrees of freedom, which it has the shoulder joint here and elbow joint here, or knee, depending on what you want to call it. And frankly, this two degrees of freedom hexapod is perfectly fine. You need to use up a lot more power to control the three degrees of freedom legs, but a much less to control the two degrees of freedom, but still essentially doing the same thing. Next, I want to talk about how easy they are to program, which is pretty important. So as you can see on the free note, you have this Arduino board. So if you know Arduino, then you're good to go with the Freenov Hexapod. For the Adit Hexapod, you actually have a Raspberry Pi. It's kind of hard to see, just concealed. Oh, you can kind of see it here. This is really good, but you have a Raspberry Pi and you have a shield on top of it, which is also kind of hard to see, my apologies, but this shield on the top controls the motors. If you know how to control Raspberry Pi, if you go with Python, then this one is pretty good as well. I find this one pretty easy to program. The hardest one to program is the Phoenix Hexapod. Look at it, it has two boards and each of them have their own separate software. And this one requires more hardware detail to be able to control because this actually goes into the registers to control the motors. I honestly think this one is unnecessarily hard to, uh, to program. And you have your Arduino software at the bottom, I believe that is. It's been a long time. I actually kind of forgot how to program this, but this one was pretty complicated to program compared to the other two. All of these robots come with their own controllers as well as their own programming libraries so you don't have to control every individual servo. However, if you do want to control every individual servo, that is possible. Next, I want to talk about batteries. The Phoenix Hexapod has really inconvenient batteries because watch this, watch this. Okay, ah! This thing needs to be programmed with two boards and to power the motors, you need one battery pack, which goes over here. It's hard to do this with one hand, hold on. There we go, it's attached. And it also needs this 9 volt battery, which attaches here. Now it's on, but there's no battery. 
The kit doesn't come with a battery case, which makes no sense because now this hexapod is walking around dragging behind this very, very heavy battery pack and this 9 volt battery. So this battery situ situation is a huge turnoff. And unless you can 3D print your way out of this one, I highly do not recommend this one just for this battery case alone. This battery case makes the robot very heavy and again, a robot that's really heavy and has to stand on legs is really hard to control. The battery situation for the other two hexapods are, are clearly much better. As you can see here, the batteries in the the batteries in the Freena of Hexapod are a little harder to replace, which you will be replacing them a lot, and they because you have to move through these wires. But mostly, it's doable. It's more embedded into the guts of the robot. In the Deep's case, the battery case is actually external, so it's really easy to repair the replace the batteries compared to the Freena of Hexapod. So in terms of battery placement, this one's the winner. The only thing you really need to worry about is that it might drag. On, on the ground if it's walking too low, but that's mostly fine. Most of the time that won't be an issue. And also if the battery pack is hanging down below, that makes the whole structure more stable. It's e it makes it a little easier to balance. Now I want to talk about the price. The Deep and the Free Nova Hexapod are about $100 for the kit. So there's not much to compare there. They're about the same price. Now, the Phoenix Hexapod, on the other hand, is really interesting. I mean, $800 kind of dollars is kind of expensive for uh, something that runs out of batteries really quickly. And you can see there are other cheaper offers, such as the one with, well, no electronics. I'm just as confused as you are. The last thing that I want to compare between these three is the camera. The Deep Tier is the only one that just comes equipped with a camera. It's a very, very nice Raspberry Pi camera. Whereas the other two, if you want to add a camera to them, you will have to work a little harder. And I think the camera alone makes the Deep Hexapod a lot more superior than the other two. So in summary, I would give the Phoenix Hexapod 3 out of 10 stars, this Freenove probably 2, 3 out of 10 stars, and the Deep uh, 8 out of 10 stars. It was clearly the superior one. It's got the camera, it's the easiest one to control, and it was the easiest one to program. Thanks for watching! Uh,